Okay. It looks like we're live. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the first performance of a conversation with my brother. This is a Zoom premiere, and this play is by Paul Navarra. Um, this is a play about family, a family, their blue collar business, and their middle brothers coming out in 1980. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to encourage everybody to donate to the Actors Fund um, in lieu of purchasing a ticket for this production. Um, so the stage reading is the benefit for the Actors Fund. Since March 18th of 2020, the Actors Fund has provided more than $10.1 million in emergency financial assistance to nearly 9,000 artists whose work in performing arts and entertainment has been shut down due to COVID-19. Um, with shutdowns on Broadway, film, television, theater, concerts, um, and many other areas of entertainment, the need is great and growing. Um, this emergency financial assistance is helping our most vulnerable and those in financial crisis with assistance for basic living expenses, such as essential medications, to help prevent evictions, and to pay for food or utilities. So please, in lieu of purchasing a ticket, we ask that you donate to www.actorsfund.org uh, slash donate. Um, and just to let everyone know, after Act One, there will be a 10 minute intermission before we commence Act Two. Okay, without further ado, I'm going to introduce our characters and their actors. Um, okay, characters. Dad, World War II vet owner of the family business truck wrecking yard in Northern California, played by Austin Pendleton. Mom, a stay at home mom, loves her family and kids, played by, played by Jane Barish. John, the oldest brother and working in the family business, tough, played by, by Mike Roche. Andy, middle brother, loves life and himself, played by Justin Chevalier. David, the youngest brother, happy-go-lucky youngest sibling, peacemaker, played by Charles Anderson Black. Grace, daughter, works in makeup sales at Macy's, played by Julie Hayes. Karen, girlfriend to John, wants him to make a commitment to her, played by Holly O'Brien. Grandpa, great old man, married to grandma, dad's mom, until his wife died, can be a jerk and a vocal womanizer. He was lonely and they knew each other. It was convenient for him, played by Arthur French. Grandma, tough but loving and tired of grandpa's vocal only antics with young girls, married to her husband, mom's dad, until her husband died. Not sure if marrying grandpa was the right choice. She was lonely, played by Marsha Hoffrecht. conversation with my brother okay, in two acts. The play takes place in 1980. John, the oldest brother of the family, enters the kitchen in a rage. He's a big man in decent shape. He eats from a large bag of chips. He is deeply disturbed by some prior event. He goes right at the refrigerator, searching for more food to satiate his emotion. He grabs sandwich stuff from the refrigerator and sits down hard at the kitchen table in dad's chair. John's right leg begins shaking, not violently, but slightly, nervously as he makes his sandwich. The shaking leg is a Johnism. John grinds his teeth into the sandwich and chips. During this action in the background, disco music blaring and the shower running, John's younger brother, Andrew, is taking a shower. John glances towards the wall phone. After two beats, it rings. He sits for a couple of rings and he moves to it, glares at it for a second and picks it up. He has an argument with the other person on the phone. John slams the phone down. Ma? Is that you? I, no, it's me. She's not here. Ma? Ma, put, put, put my white things in the wash, will ya? No bleach this time, please. I, I'll be out in a couple of minutes. Ma? Bleach! Ma? She's not here, Andy. Turn off that damn music, will ya? John hangs Ma. up and moves back to his food, his right leg shaking. The phone rings again. John throws chips at the phone, shower running and disco music blasting. Ma, answer the phone, will ya, Ma? Can you please answer it? It's probably for me. Not here. Turn down the... John grabs the phone, almost ripping it out of the wall. Hello? Yes, I, I'm eating lunch. With uh, bologna, chips. No, she, she's not here. What? No, I, I told you, it's inside the red building. 
No, no, no. We agreed to 250. No, no, I won't sell it for less. No, not, not for that. No. I don't care. What? Half an hour. God damn it. God damn it. Andy enters as the receiver comes crashing down again. Andy is in excellent shape, handsome, not effeminate in the least, only a wet bath towel wrapped around and held by one hand, not tied. He goes to the refrigerator, takes out soda, opens and drinks it, and loses control of the towel as he turns around to go back out. The towel falls down and reveals Andy. John watching, but trying not to let Andy know. Andy's not phased in the least. He finishes taking a gulp of soda, takes his time getting the soda down, and leaves the towel for a beat, then wraps the towel around him again. As Andy wraps the towel, John looks away quickly, embarrassed, and then turns back for a beat and looks as Andy drinks, then John turns away quickly. What? Nothing. You shouldn't take the Lord's name in vain. Sorry, Mr. Perfect. Huh? I really can't... Uh... Uh, what? Andy exits. He's driving me nuts. I wish he'd die. Look, it can't be that bad. You don't know. What? He overpays for the wrecks. I can't make a dime. I, I buy junk trucks for a hundred bucks and make nine. If I didn't watch him, we'd be broke in two months. He never listens. Uh, do you try talking to him? Have you? All he thinks about is the Bahamas. You know, one cruise, and, and now he wants to go twice a year. The shop pays for his, your insurance, gas, clothes, food, you're a, you know, he's spending every dime. He's spending every time, dime I bust my ass to make. And some weeks I don't take a salary. Dad's compulsive. Andy dries his hair. Andy turns the dryer off and on so he can hear better, which both varies Andy and John's volume, who find themselves yelling at times, which varies with the rhythm of moments. Dryer continues off and on throughout until Andy re-enters. He's ruining my, our future. I'm killing myself so he can vacation. It's not fair to me, mom, or the family. Look, he'll never change. You know what really kills me about him? What? He's never worried about the shop. He just sings that goddamn song. What will I do when you are far away? And I'm so blue. What'll I do? <laughs> What'll I do? Uh, is kissing you. <laughs> What'll I do? <laughs> he, he drives me nuts. John sits and begins shaking his right leg nervously. Then, what? Hair dryer starts again and stops. I'll never be that happy. No, no, no matter what, things, things get to me and, and I, I lose it for stupid reasons. All he does all day long is sing that song. I, I wish he'd die. Oh, Andy enters. Come on. I do. Enough. Like an old movieola. You turn the crank, slow motion. Man, I, I see his heart attack. He hits the ground. I get the insurance. Hands are washed. Umbilical cord is cut. And I'm free. Man. Same shit, November through Christmas. Business sucks, dad's full of cheer. The employees get a big turkey and bonus and I'm sweating to pay the taxes. Andy's reading the paper. It's really my own goddamn fault. What's going on with you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it's okay. Everything's okay, works well. Look, I, 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 um, I might get a promotion uh, tonight, uh, tonight manager soon. You'll probably be there forever. Uh, why don't you, don't you, uh, great, great, leave. What? Why stay? Uh, leave. Start over. Not easy. I've got responsibilities. To who? Who? Yes, who? Family, huh? their future, my future. I can't just go. 
So, so life is so easy for you. So <laughs> I can't. That's all. I'd like well, to. Well, look, who, who do you think you're talking to? When you leave, we'll survive. Right. Look, you can be replaced. <laughs> Life's too short. Am I right, sweetheart? <laughs> Look, why do you answer? He loves to get at you. I can't stand the ringing phone. Mm. Pavlov's dog? I ain't nobody's dog. Look, why come here for lunch every day? Go out. I like it here. You bring your own stuff. I don't want to eat all yours. Yeah, you're not. I hide mine. <laughs> I, I, I'm moving out soon. And then none of you animals are going to get one lousy scrap. <laughs> your own place. You're too old to be living here. Right. You want to get laid? Get your own place? What's going on? Look, how do you know I've never been laid here? <laughs> God. Yeah, God, you are such an asshole. How's work? The kids I teach at the youth center are great. Look, two more semesters at school, I, I have my degree. You should have your own kids. After you, you're much older. Oh, look, how do you know I haven't? Because I kicked your ass if you did. Yeah, right. Tell Davy to get his degree. If Grace can, any All he does is try these stupid get-rich-quick schemes. He's an idiot sometimes. I shouldn't have dropped out. Yeah. Have you uh, seen Grandma Kelly and Grandpa John lately, or? No. It's too weird, them marrying each other. Grandpa Kelly and Grandma Carrillo are rolling over in their graves right now. Grandpa's still pissed at the pollution of his mercury. Grandma Carrillo's machine. He would have killed someone. <laughs> he would have. He would have. That last day, Grandpa left. He hit Dad in the leg with a tranny gear. Hey, what? After Grandma Carrillo died, he drank all day. Well, I, I, Thank God he retired. <laughs> yeah. Look, Grandma Kelly hurt her back again lifting uh, garbage cans on Tuesday. You should help her out more. Me? You? It's like, it's like incest, them together. Oh, That's fucking sick. I've helped them all my life. It's time the rest of you dumb jerks step up. <laughs> Asshole. How's Karen? Why? Huh? She's pissed. Always pissed. We're supposed to go to her uncle's for a barbecue. You ever had it? What? Lamb. Good stuff. If I go, I'll bring you some. Uh, don't tell the rest of them. I'll never get a bite. How's uh, how's the uh, softball team? Mm. I got a double and a triple last week, and we're in the playoffs. Dan Mitchell broke his wrist sliding. The best third baseman in the league last year. You used to play. Why didn't you sub for him? No, uh, it's been too long. Come on. Uh, What's the matter? Nothing. Then play. We need. Look, not with your friends. Everything's okay now? That was a long time ago. I, I don't see why you're... What? I, uh... I really do, uh... You know, I... What? Shut up. Nothing, nothing. Don't get queer on me. What? Yeah. 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 So what's going on? Look, did Gracie talk to you? Is she a? Uh, uh, is she say? What? What would she tell me? I don't already know. Ugh. Nothing. What the hell is going on? 
You tell me. I, I, I've wanted to talk to the family for, I, I, I've wanted to, you know, tell you how I, I, I uh, I've always been, when, when, when I was little, you, you know, Gracie dressed me up fancy when I was little and, and mom took, took home movies. I've, uh, what do you want to tell me little brother? Man, you are a shithead. You know that. You want me dead like dad. What? Do I disgust you, John? Look, I'm gay, all right. All right? Look, I said it to you, finally. Gracie told me, but I wanted to hear it from your own big mouth. How does my little brother know he's, have you? That's none of your, Look, I know, all right, I know. Mom wants me to, to see her psychiatrist. I said, okay, to keep her off me, but no shrink's gonna change me. Well, maybe he'll help you. He hasn't done much for her. Well, she's fine now, and her doctor's a woman, you chauvinistic jerk, and help me what? Look, fuck you, John. Calm down now. You're still related to- I'm related. Dad fucking found you in a wrecked truck at the shop. Well, give me a fucking break. It's too much shit to pile on me today. It, someone's got to give me more. Just look, God, you're unbelievable, man. This, uh, this is not shit. This is my life. My life, God damn it. John stands in defiance, fist raised. They stare each other down and circle like big cats. John silent moves past Andy and gets food from the refrigerator and tears into it. What is with you? You've always had someone to grab hold of when life screwed with you. I've had no one, John. You can't imagine how I am inside. My personal life is done Look, nothing. we're brothers. This is our but personal life here. here. And you're well, you're a gay. Look, can't you say it? Can't you just say it? Say it, say it. Gay. Gay, all right, God damn it, gay. Is that so bad? Damn it, just give me a break. What the hell's wrong with you, you freak? This is not happening to me. I, I don't believe that you freak. Sure. Look, who the hell do you think you are, macho jerk? Shut up, damn it, shut up. You can't do this shit to our family. Family? You... You've never tried, huh? You really tried to... What, what John? What, what, fuck a woman? Yes, yes, God damn it! fuck a woman. I can't believe that you'll never know what it's like to... to... Look, I, I know some... White girls. A fucking whore? You're gonna buy me a whore just so you can make me like you? Look, why don't you get me a nice Catholic girl like Karen? Uh, you treat her like shit, and I'll treat mine like shit. Just for you, asshole. Get your face or I'll... What? Beat me up? Come on, I'd love to kick your ass, big man. Look, listen to me. Andy sits at the table with his back three quarters to John. Right, right, right. Let's both calm down here. John backs away slowly. Did I so do something to, to make you this way? Then what the hell happened? We're both brought up in, in, in this house. Same value who went to church every Sunday. To our respect for elders, I, I don't understand you, man. I, I love women in my arms. They, it hates to watch them move. I love touching them and making them squeal. I can do that. They're a gift from God for men. And, and this, just how the hell could you want to be with a guy? Look, not so different. What's that supposed to mean? 
nothing. <laughs> Thank God we turned out different. Thank God. You tell grandma and grandpa? At least two of them are dead. The old man. You were little. You say it stopped. Forget it. Accept it. I'm not going back. This is it. I'm happy with it. M most of the time. You are what you are. I accept you. I'm normal. It's a bad dream. And you'll, we'll all wake up. Look, look, that's the family problem. A bunch of dreamers. Grandpa winning the Irish sweepstakes. You wanted to sing like Sinatra and dad playing with the Dorsey brothers after the war. The bunch of you should see that this is life. This is reality. No dreams. I have the guts to do something, make my life into something. I'm still your brother. You want me to throw my arms around you uh, like this thing would make us a normal family? Uh, you drop this bomb. Great. Look, I'm going out with a couple of friends. Leave. I'm going. I'm going on with my life. Great. Good. Go. I'm late. Andy's backing out. Andy heads for the door and John blocks his way with his body. Gracie's okay with this? She's got it, so many of those friends, right? You're a fucking goofball. I'm going back to work. Andy goes to John and tries to hug him. John pulls back and pushes Andy away hard. Both grapple and stare at each other down. Grace enters from the other door. She's been long distance running, drenched in sweat, and has a towel around her neck. She's a little overweight, but still fit. Could have been a dancer. She pushes the two apart. Andy and John are winded. Bull, your jets, what the hell? Hello, you two monsters. I'm here. Your sister speaks to you both. Your sister's going to kick both your butts. Ugh. Okay, what's going on with you guys? What's the problem? Bye. See you later. You told him? Told him what? G guess. Oh. And? It's about time you two really talked. He's a jerk ass. And what did the jerk ass say? Look, he asked me how I could do this to the family. And? Well, and, and, and he wants me to buy a, a, oh, he wants me to buy a whore? To straighten me out. All he cares about is his overused dick. What? Just calm down, okay? Yeah, he's one of those sexist jerks he hangs out with. Well, you're being the same. Bullshit. Look, why are you defending him? I'm not. Try and see his side. Beneath that macho exterior, he cares. Your brother's Andy. Bullshit. He cares, his screwed self-image of a man. Oh, you're wrong. Look, I've got to get going. Where are you going? I'm meeting someone for lunch. Who? A friend. All right, is that okay with everybody here? Calm down. So, did you tell anyone else? Mom. Yeah? She cried a little. Oh, Jesus, promise you won't say anything to the rest of the family till after the Thanksgiving? Yeah, 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 I wouldn't want to disrupt the family's bullshit gathering, would I? I've always come last in this family. Spare me, I'm eating. Andy stops at the door. Grace goes to the fridge and opens it, checking the contents. She grabs a bunch of food, eating voraciously on one item from the fridge as she explores the other contents. Andy follows her back to the refrigerator. Mm, you keep your lousy mitts off my C's candy. Why, you're afraid that you'll get some straight cooties from your sis? 
Mm-hmm. She locates the White Seas candy box, opens it quickly, grabs a few, and pops them into her mouth. Nuts and chews, I'm in heaven. Andy grabs the candy away from Gracie, and they both, in a playful mood, fight for control of the candy. <laughs> you, you me off. That's a gift. Get off. You people eat all my stuff. They, they battle for control of the candy box, and she wins. A couple of pieces are not going to hurt. Oh. You pig, no more. I ran, Andy, I'm starving here. Look, you're eating too much. What's the matter with you? You're gonna gain it all back. She gets water at the sink. Mind your own damn business. Okay, then now sit your perfect ass down. Who's this friend? He's um, one of my teachers, CPR. <laughs> he and I. Uh... Yeah. Okay. Well, why don't you bring him home for dinner on Friday? I'll ask John and Karen and we'll make a party of it. Oh, I'll bring some of those good chips and I'll make the onion dip and you can bring the tab. Yeah, (laughs) the saccharin will keep the calories in the dip and chips. Yeah, yeah, jerk. (laughs) Give me a hug, you hamburger. And don't worry, as time goes on, John will come around. Mom wants me to see a shrink. You think we'll all still get together tomorrow? Thanksgiving. I asked him for Thanksgiving dinner. I said Friday, and that was a joke. Tomorrow's not right. Yeah, but when's right? Next week? What, next year? 10 years? Not now. I have to do this now. You're wrong. You're wrong. Uh, Now, what happened between you and your brother is enough. He'll break your neck if you do this. And if he doesn't, dad will kill you. And and you might as well shoot your last two grandparents between the eyes because right between the turkey and the cranberry sauce, they will have a stroke. It'll be over between all of you. Mom enters, arm full of groceries. Hey, can you guys get the rest from the trunk? I'm really pooped. Andy and Grace, without saying a word, exit. Mom drops the bags, eyes mail on the table, and walks to see who it's from. She sits, looks over the mail, opens two or three, and begins shaking her right leg nervously. She reads through more mail, continuing to shake her right leg through the next monologue. Is this all the mail there is? I was hoping for a check from the new tenants. Oh, they make me so mad sometimes. The check's always late. And your father, your father, well, he gets so mad at me, you know. He takes it out on me. He blames me that the first young tenants destroyed what it took us us years to accumulate. It's not my fault, you know. I didn't find them. It was the darn property management company. They told us these kids were okay, that they were responsible, but no one cares anymore. Rules are all messed up in today's world, but we trusted them. We took it for granted that all people were good. But no, your father insists on blaming me for those kids' lack of consideration of the good people's property. So he gets mad at me for them destroying what we built together. Why does he blame me? Does he think that I wanted this to happen? You know... Sometimes he almost makes me believe that it is my fault. But it's, it's really not. It's not. He makes me so mad sometimes that I want to I wanna walk right up to him and look him in his eyes and say, John, this is for you. Then I put my hands... Ah. Ah. 
But I know it's not my fault, is it? No. It's that damn property management company. Oh, well. Andy and Grace are now standing behind her, listening. He will never change. He's as stubborn as the day is long. He's like senior. God bless him. He's the image of your brother, John. I don't know. What were you talking about, Mom? What? I said, what were you talking about? Just now? Yeah. Weren't you two listening to me? You asked us to go get the rest of the bags. No one ever listens to me around here. I don't count for anything around here. My voice doesn't amount to a, a hill of beans in this house anymore. Am I just an old woman that no one pays attention to? Ooh, mother, what is wrong with you? Yeah, Ma. What? <laughs> Don't you get smart with me, young lady. And nothing is wrong. What could be wrong? There's nothing wrong with my life here. Everything is fine. Everything is great. Your father is great. He and I are great. You're both great. Your remaining grandparents are great, and the shop is certainly great. Oh, <laughs> life's a ball. Can't you both tell? Can't you see that we're all just skating on thin ice and everything is coming up roses and I'm so happy? Everyone would be better off if I was dead and gone. Oh, <laughs> mother, calm down. No, you guys calm down. Look, what the hell is going on here? Mother, mother, what is the matter? What's your... What? Nothing. I don't want to talk about it right now, okay? Later. And don't you swear. Okay, fine. I'm late anyway. Mother, come on, let's talk. Later, later. Andy re-enters, leaning in. I got off tomorrow, so I'll be here for dinner. Uh, Gracie said I could bring a friend. Who is it? Uh, my friend, Mom. That's who. Is him? Yes. Let me talk with your father. I'm sure he won't mind. Maybe you should talk it over with John first. Why? Why? Did you tell him too? Oh my God, how was he? How, how was he? I... They were gonna kill each other, Ma. He always flies off the handle. But did he say anything about not coming to Thanksgiving? No. Well, then, Everything is all right, isn't it? Did you talk to your father? Silence as Andy exits. Did he tell your father? No. Oh, thank God. Wait, Andy! This is going to be a great holiday. Your father, your grandparents sick, and your brothers fighting. We're going to have a... A-H-E double toothpicks of a time, aren't we? Yes, Mom, we sure are. Act one, scene two. It's 6 p.m. the same day. Grace is at the kitchen table playing solitaire. There's a half empty bottle of tab on the table and a bowl of dip, pretzels, and chips. Grace is copiously consuming everything and re reading a Cosmopolitan magazine. John enters from the front door. How's the city? Fine, cold, too much fog. You know, I'm inside all day. Too many people and buildings. It's depressing as hell. And the Filipinos, they make me nuts. <laughs> you get me, please, Gip. I buy one more cologne and you get me, please, Gip. No. I say, you only get one free gift. I buy two cologne and I get a second piece gift. Free? No! Hey, Dad fought with those people in the war. Enough of that shit. You know, better not let him hear that stuff. Okay, okay. Sorry, John. Cool your jets. 
I'm not serious. Those people, they just drive me nuts. You know, they, they won't stop asking me. They won't stop. All right. Yeah, at least you're not living around them. You know, that depress you even more. You know, we've got the biggest population of Vietnamese that you guys try here. Uh, live and let live, I say. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. It smells like victory. Someday this war is going to end. What the hell are you talking about? You're sick. I'm kidding. Oh, right. right. John smirks and gets a soda. Grace eats. Hey, uh, remember when we got the chicken pots at the same time and stayed home from school for two weeks? Yeah, you know, we watched old movies and played war all day. You want to play? Clark? Shuffle. Hi. She, she goes to the drawer, gets a deck, returns and sits after a couple of shuffles. So what happened with you and Andy? They play war throughout the next scene. So? A whore would straighten them out. Oh, you are the biggest ass in the world. She deals and they arrange cards in silence. It's not normal. Not for you, but who are you to judge? Cute. Not trying to be cute. See his side. Side? Side that says, brother wants to wake up with some hairy butt in his face. I mean, come on, Gracie, that's not the way God wanted it. Not the way God wanted it. Yeah, Mr. Messiah. When did you become so righteous? What? When was the last time you went to Mass, John? This has got nothing to do with it. I believe in God in my own way. But the way he is, it's not the way God said it should be. I've got to keep this family intact. I've got to keep the business going. Otherwise, all these years, shot to hell. We're intact no matter what Andy does. He's never going to work down there. Um, hey, look, listen. I've been wanting to talk to you about... What? Well, about the business. Me and Davey have, well, for a long time, it's been, well, you know, about Dad and... and well, both of you, like me and Davey, like going in as partners at the shop, taking over so Dad can retire sooner. We, we have a great idea. You're out of your mind. David, maybe, but a, a woman in, in the wrecking yard business? <laughs> it's selling, and I've been doing it for years. Junk can't be any different. Dad's going to crack up. Listen, seriously, I've got a great idea. We both hate our jobs, and, and I've got more of an education than all of you bums put together. If you could sell junk, then anyone can do it. Not, Doorbell rings, and Grace rises to get to the door. It's not easy, Gracie. You can't just do the business. There's a lot to learn. Teach me. You're, you're nuts. David can't tie his own shoes, and you. And you, you. I started out picking up the guard dog shit, pulling some parts, making contacts. I know the up and down of junk wrecking yard business. Who the hell listens to me anyway? You know, take over the business. I'd like you to see that. Hey, Karen. I haven't seen you in a long time. How you doing? Fine. How's the family? Uh, you know, same old, same old. Come on in. As the two enter. Look who's here, John. Hi, Kara. Hi. Hi. Well, you didn't return my... Oh, sorry. It was late and I... Uh... Oh, and I'm, I'm sorry about the... There's nothing to be sorry about. Phone rings. Grace moves off to Alcove to answer phone. I don't think that this is really... John's pissed because I want to join the business. Grace speaks to the voice on the other end. Hello, Mrs. Napersack. Uh, Joan said we had three cases of the Misty Toe. Oh, where were you last night? Shush. Don't you scold me. Where were you? <laughs> We said that we loved each other. Look, it doesn't matter what happened the other night. What the hell is wrong with you? You're an asshole. We talked about getting married and having kids. We can fix whatever's broken. It, it, it ain't broke. I want more. Whores, did they do it? 
You're so damn blind. Do you feel anything? I'm throwing myself at you. Oh, you moron. Why don't you and your softball buddy find some sluts tonight? I don't want you to get hurt. Like your sick friends in those magazines? What? I'll help you. Help what? She's a jerk. Sorry, my boss needed. Oh, forget her anyway. So, so Karen, David and I want to go into business with my dad. What? Oh, really? Great. Like, whose side are you on? Not your sweetheart. I think that's a great idea. She knows sales. I've seen her. Your brother's a little immature, but everybody loves him. <laughs> Keep it in the family since you're never going to have kids. See, you big jerk. Other people believe in me. I'm not saying that. You, you, you don't know nothing about a junkyard and it's no place for a woman. No. You believe that it's no place for me. I think you're getting him, Grace. Someone should. You know, what is this, a war? I don't want to talk about it. And you asked that, all right? I'd like to know what he's got to say. All right. All right. I'll have kids someday when I'm ready. And I've been with women. I'll bet you a million, million bucks he's never touched one. Oh, that's what he says. Who? Andy. Has he been with a guy? I don't think so. Maybe I could get three girls to screw the shit out of him and that'd change him. I know he changed my mind. You fuck. Hey, John. Um, why don't you screw a couple of guys and then you might get his point of view. <laughs> I'd buy and sell pictures of that. You two are sick. <laughs> We're sick. He's asking him for Thanksgiving dinner. Who? His new friend. I know, we'll seat him right next to you. <laughs> uh, 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 you're both getting a kick out of this. <laughs> yeah, this is great. He's, he's gonna tell the whole block. Hey, hey, uh, g guess what, neighbors? I'm not really a man. I'll break his neck. This is not happening to me. Andy's a man and you're the biggest wiener on the planet. You're full of some shit. What shit? What? The world revolves around you? Your brother's a great guy. No matter who he sleeps You don't understand my commitment. Penis brain? Whoa, whoa, you too, come on. Commitment to who? John, the family, or you? So just go find what's going to make you happy out there. It's, it's not a promise you should owe. Things are easy to you. I'm a man and the oldest, a double curse. It's what I'm bound to do, raised to be. I can't change. Oh, bleed a little, John, bleed. Don't have time. Dad's got to see me. And I miss Andy, too. He's no threat to you. It's our difference. Threat? Look, we all do what we want. I'm trying to fix what's wrong. What's wrong? Everything. Oh, you're so... Ah! Um. You're, you're unbelievable, John. Just go after her. Go after Karen. Oh. Racing with the moon. Ah, da 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 and then, like the moon is lost from you, gazing at the stars, da 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 da. And then, like the moon, it fades from you, racing with the moon. Racing with the moon. Hi, John. Are you going out with Karen tonight, you old dog? No. She told me. Dad, stop eating all those nuts. There won't be any left for tomorrow. I remember driving into the city every Friday. Uh, oh, fuck, wait. Uh, I, 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 uh, I'm, uh, I, 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 I remember driving into the city every Friday night after work. I had two tuxedos. I could cut up the rug. Hey, Ma, top of the Mark Hopkins, huh? Yes, dear, you were the dancer. Top dresser, too, huh, Ma? Yes, dear, you were. Uh, father. Andy wants to bring a, 
Oh, yes, sir. Yes. Those are the good hell. Those were great times. Those girls were sexy hell. They couldn't keep their hands off. <clears throat> but we had a great time, didn't we, Ma? Dad sits at the table a little out of breath. Yes, dear, we sure did. Hey, Johnny, did you hear about Carl Netzi? He had a mild stroke. You all right? Well, he's got some minor paralysis on his left side, thank the Lord. He's only 45. When he worked for us, he drank beer like a fish and he'd eat 25 Snickers bars a day. He was like a damn squirrel stocking up for the winter. I warned him, but he wouldn't listen to me, no. He thought an old man like me, a veteran, didn't know nothing about nothing, but I know my family knew real. I lived, I lived through the big woozer, big war. The Philippines, he was dead wrong. They were all dead wrong, all those Japs. Tough shoulders, man a boy. <laughs> it's not right. He just used things like they had no meaning, no worth. Why do people do that? That's the problem with the world today. No one cares anymore about nothing or nobody. I remember when I was a boy, we didn't have enough to go around, but we thank God for what we did have and how we worked for it. All of Carl's life, all he's done is take and waste, take and waste. I saw that in the Philippines. Those boys, all my friends. It's the sin of sloth and God's punished Carl. Don't be so tough, Father. That's the way life is. Tough what, Dad? Enough. But enough what? Enough of what a good God provides when you break your back to get it. Food, family, money, and friends, if you're, if you're really lucky. Huh. I love both of you guys. I hope you're as lucky as your mother and me. But if I ever saw either of you drink or eat like that pig, Carl, I'll beat the living hell out of you, both of you. Yeah, you got it? Dad. You're, you're not too old for a good spanking, you know. My drill sergeant in boot cap, he struck the fear of God on two. <laughs> I've got something that'll teach you both a lesson and you both a world of good mug. Uh, get me a belt. Sean, knock it off. I'm kidding, Ma. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Say yes. Yeah. Yes. Say yes. It's nicer. Yes. Yes. That's good. Ma, I'll get that new shirt for Johnny. Your mother found a nice shirt at the Emporium. It wasn't too expensive, but I said, buy the expensive one that nothing is too good for my Johnny. Oh, yes, it was on sale. It was your father's idea. <laughs> she holds up the new shirt for all to peruse. Of course, it was Mama. The sale of the shirt. John, Ma, no, it did look good on the mannequin. Try it. Come on, come on, come on. Try it on. Don't be spoiled sport, Johnny. Mom with the new shirt over her shoulder moves to John and unbuttons his old shirt and John doesn't protest. He removes his old shirt and hands it to her, places the old shirt over her shoulder and she smiles at him, staring right through him, and then helps him on with the new shirt and then buttons his new shirt for him. He just smiles looking right through her. She pats his chest twice, smooths the shirt over John's chest, kisses him on the cheek and moves away. Thanks, Dad. Of course the mannequins don't have any wool handles, right, Johnny? <laughs> They're slim and built in the perfection of God's knowing eye and the perfection of the human form. Oh, by the way, you are working this Saturday. No, uh, you are. <laughs> no, no, no. I told you a long time ago, your mother and I are going to Carmel this weekend after Thanksgiving. You should, you really should clean out your ears. Oh my God. You could grow potatoes in there. L listen to me when I speak to you, John. That shirt likes, looks wonderful on you, Johnny. Isn't it all right that we go, sweetheart? They're only inches away from each other now. I told you a long time ago, we might be playing for the championship. And we are. I've been working my butt off getting my guys ready. I'm the captain and they need me. I've got to be there. It's all right, Father. We can go next week. As Dad speaks, Mom's working in the background. No one helps her. No, we can't. Your mother needs rest from all the work she does for the holidays. She cleans the house, shops, 
She does all this so that you guys can have a happy holiday. She slaves away for you guys months before. The least you could do is make sure she gets a little R&R. &R. We're not asking for the world, you know. Father, it's all right. We'll go next weekend. I can wait. You play your little game, Johnny. I can wait. They'll just have to win without you. Father. John was never much of a ball player anyway, Ma. I'm sure they do a lot. I'm sure they do a lot better without him. Well, I mean, he must be good if, if he's the captain of the team. And my decision here, I've made my decision here. No, but mom, he's, he's, he's right. It, it, it really doesn't matter if I'm there or not. I, I can get a sub. He, he's right. John, come on. You Mind your own so business, Tracy. Uh, Father dear, this is my business. John is good. I've seen him play. It's the one thing he really does love doing. So don't make him feel guilty, okay? If he's guilty, it's his problem. He, he can stand up for himself. Well... I'll work. I always do. Moving to him and standing directly over him with his hand open, ready to slap John's face. What? What did you say? Nothing. That's what I thought you said. You said nothing. Well, I'm glad that settled, Gracie. Gracie, get me some ice of water. <laughs> Will you, and put lots of ice cubes in it, will you? She nods and smiles at dad, goes to the sink, gets a large pot of water, fills it to the top, and walks over to dad. He watches this and he pours it over his head. Grace, mom, and John laugh, not dad. He seethes. Grace runs out the front door. <laughs> dad, go put on some dry clothes before you catch your death. Uh, I should have done that years ago. <laughs> Dad's silent exits. Yeah, you should have, except we all should have, except he probably would have beat us all with his belt. Probably. God knows how many times I wanted to hit him with his belt. Why did you give in? Stop being afraid of him, John. I've been for such a long time. He ever hate you again? No, no, no. Just that one. He didn't hurt much. He's a tough and intimidating man. He, he uses that so well to fight everyone else around him, striking out of the world to get his way. And when the dust clears, he has no friends, John. None. He drove them away over the years. I do love your father, but he makes me resentful the way he bullies me sometimes that, that I want to just, well, I, a lot of times just want to walk up to him and... Mom trance like during this action. Smiling, she moves to John and places her hands around his neck, miming strangulation, three to five beats. Then mom stops seeing John Jr., kisses John on the lips softly. After a kiss is finished, she's completely out of her trance, going back to the monologue as if nothing's happened and giggling like a schoolgirl. No. He's my husband. And Grandma Kelly taught me. You've got to free yourself from his grasp, Johnny. Andy's begun. Now it's your time. You're so much like your father. I wish you could have seen him before life beat him down. He was so big. When he got back from the war, he had wonderful ideas. He started playing his music again, and, and he was writing beautiful music. He'd gotten his friends back together, and they were, they were going on the road. He was special. Dad still cries when he watches Victory at Sea. He lost so many friends. You know... Your grandfather wanted him as a partner at the yard. Dad wouldn't quit the band, though, but, but your grandfather kept telling Dad he was a failure. And if you hear that long enough, you believe. Senior kept at him till Dad quit playing altogether. I know he hated himself for giving in, but, but Dad had ideas for the shop, too. 
senior had his own way, his own, his own goddamn way. <laughs> Dad's ideas were never good enough for senior. And do you know that lovely senior has never given Dad the shares of stock in the shop? His rightful due. Senior says, when I'm dead, you'll get yours, kid. Dad's living on Senior's lies. Get out, Johnny. Find some happiness in this life away from this place. No one's going to give you anything. I can't run. Don't. Take a little time, okay? Listen, can you help me vacuum? I know that you hate to, but this place has got to be in shape for tomorrow. Sure. End of act one. There will be a 10 minute intermission.
Okay, welcome back everybody. Um, all right, we're gonna start act two. Act two, scene one. It's 9.30 a.m. Mom is in the kitchen cooking breakfast. Coffee's brewing. Mom places scrambling eggs and sausage in container, containers on the kitchen table. The toaster's toasting. The family will awaken room by room, entering in their pajamas. Turkey's on the counter, ready to be stuffed. The dining room table is set for dinner. The dining room table is off left. The lights are low. Mom dressed in her robe and slippers, humming, and after a few minutes of cooking, she places the food and breakfast plates to warm in the oven. Off slightly of the kitchen is the ironing board with a basket of ironing next to it. Mom takes out one of dad's white shirts from the basket and irons at the shirt. You could say she's attacking the shirt with the iron, methodically throughout the monologue, getting all the wrinkles out of the shirt. Let's see now. It's 9.30. A 20 pound turkey with the stuffing should take about four and a half to five and a half hours at what? 325 degrees. So about three o'clock. Then my folks get here about, about one. And we have the dips. We can eat dinner about five, uh, 5.30. I hope my mother made her jello molds. She probably worked too hard and she'll be worn out all day. And her aching back. Ugh, she'll be so tired. I wish she wouldn't do so much. Those walls don't need to be washed every week. If Senior helped her more, she wouldn't hurt her back so. That son of a. We can eat off her floors, for God's sakes. Why doesn't she hire some help? God knows he's got the money. He's so lazy. Oh, well. She, she just... If she makes her onion dip and the crab mold, then I only have to make one onion dip. No, I'll do two. That would be too much. But if she doesn't make her molds, then we won't have enough. Oh, I should have called her. What's the matter with me? Shh, Mama. Shh, calm down now. I better send someone to the store to get some sour cream and more of those good chips. Oh, I forgot to get ice. Dad always needs lots of ice for his ice of water. Oh. Hi, honey. Sleep well? Did I wake you? Sorry, hon. How are you? That's good. Would you do me a favor and pick up some sour cream and diet soda on the way over and more ice? Morning. Morning, dear. Sorry, hon. Uh, yes, more ice. And please, get those good chips. Get two of each, okay? Johnny? What? Yes, he's here. No, he's not working. He'll be here. Are you there? You can stop. Uh, I'll see you about one. Uh-huh. Bye. He coming? Of course he is. Did I say ice? Everything is going to be all right. You'll see. It will work itself out, so just be patient. Like Dad says, he's a dumb jerk and he's stubborn like Papa John. You're such a worrier. Just eat some breakfast and calm down, okay? I'm calm. Look, today is not the time to think about yourself. These things. Let's just enjoy our meal and be thankful to the Lord that we're all together and healthy for one more year. Because next year, well. Bye, Ma. 
because God wants us alive for at least one more year, I guess. No, Ma. I... Why? Why what? Forget it. Please don't start a fuss. Not this Thanksgiving day. For me. She walks around to a seat and puts her arms around Andy and hugs him. Please. All right, Ma. No fights. She finishes Dad's shirt, holding it up. Aha! That's it! Thank you. Good. Go wake everyone for breakfast. Yeah. Grace enters in a robe. She's in a trance. Goes to the refrigerator, opens it, and peers inside. Takes out diet soda, a dish of onion dip, closes it and grabs a bag of unopened pretzels and puts everything on the kitchen table. She goes to the cupboard and gets a glass, goes to the freezer, fills it to the top with ice, sits at the table, starts to eat and drink. She glances at mom and Andy and forces a smile as she continues to eat. Tracy, I have made a wonderful breakfast. Stop eating that junk. I don't know where you put it all. What's the matter with you? You're going to get sick. I've got fresh juice too. Mother, please, I'm on vacation. <laughs> You're crazy, you know that? Shut up, you big jerk. <laughs> When's everybody coming over? Around one. John's coming. Karen's coming for dessert. The good stuff. Dessert. Well, if you don't stop eating all that junk, you'll be too stuffed for the good stuff. Ma, will you please leave me alone? Do I look like I'm gaining weight? I'm fine, all right. I won't say another word. Karen will be here when I give my uh, speech. What speech? Oh, what a good Catholics we are. How we always tell the truth and share everything, especially around the holidays. Enough. Yes, Mom, you're right. This one time. I'll keep quiet for Thanksgiving and wait till the turkey settles, okay? Like no one knows. A few don't. Mother, come on. These aren't the good old days. Other people see everything. It's all there. With God's blessing, no shot. That's dead thanks to the Vietnam body count every night. If you people can't see, then what the hell are you? Well, then that's saying? it. End of conversation. What time do we eat? when everyone sits down. Now, help me with the bird. What? <laughs> I'm not in the mood, Gracie, okay? Just kidding, Ma. Cool your jets. <laughs> and hang in there, kid. I'm there for you. Gee, thanks, coach. Pass the tab. Put that down now. Grandma's bringing so much food, you'll be stuck before we sit down. Will you leave me alone? I'll eat till the last dog is hung. Just get off my back, okay? I'm trying to enjoy a couple of days off. Now give me some more ice, you hamburger. No. Give me more ice. Your leg's broken? Happy? Mom, I'm sorry, okay? I'm under a lot of pressure at work and... Mom goes on with her kitchen business. She chops carrots with delight over and over until they're almost mush. Grace grabs Andy, puts him in a headlock, gives him nuggies as mom chops away, grinning. Mother, Andy's a brat. <laughs> a big, fat brat. I'm gonna kill him. I'm going to smash his little pea head in the ground and I'm going to grab his hair and I'm going to pull it out. Oh, and I'm going to split his skull in two right in front of your eyes. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> you two are a couple of nuts. David enters and joins into the sibling game. He grabs Andy away from Grace and stands up, punching him against the wall in a playful exchange, exchange a la Rocky, punching him in the gut. Mom and Gracie look on. Mom, after I smash Andy to pieces, is it left to eat? 
plenty, my dear. There's sausage and eggs and toast and orange juice. Ah, uh, I'm starved. Mm. Andy, make me some toast. Oh, make it yourself, you beast. Oh, yeah? yeah. You're going to get some more. Make some more toast, you hawk. Andy throws some water at David. <laughs> There's your toast, you jerk. <laughs> uh, did you tell Dad uh, I'm bringing my friend? What's his name? Brian. What does he do? Well, he's an Iranian terrorist. <laughs> Oh, he's a neurosurgeon at Stanford. That's nice. Well, where does he live? He's got a condo near Stanford. Wow. He must do all right. All right? He's a millionaire? You're a clown. He's a... I suppose he makes out all right. So what? His father's the head of the neurosurgery at Stanford. Yeah, I bet his parents have a mansion in Palo Alto. Nice summer house in Carmel. I'll bet he's got lots of cash too, huh? Lots of stocks, CDs, maybe a couple of racehorses. Does he have a winner? <laughs> what kind of car does he drive? Look, I don't know his parents. <laughs> don't get mad. I'm asking because uh, we might need some extra investors and it would be fortunate for your friend that and his parents to get in on the ground floor. Investors? I've, uh, we've got a great idea that's gonna make me, uh, uh, the family, lots of money. Didn't Grace tell you guys the good news? News? Um, I kind of mentioned it to Grandpa and I told John a little. You said you were gonna talk to Dad first. Well, I haven't had the opportunity, all right? And what did your brother say? Well, he hasn't been too happy about anything lately. What are you talking about? What is the business with Dad and, and Johnny? Oh, well, I think that's a great idea. Great idea. Find your own investors. I'm sharing this with you because it's going to be big. I'm giving you insider information. Your friends, uh, We'll make a killing. Do me a favor. Leave my friend out of your killing. I haven't told you my idea. I don't want to know. You're lost. The money bags. All right. Great. Yes. Well, is there anything else anyone wants to share with me? All I asked was a simple question. That's all. What's the big deal? Hey, Ma, any eggs left? Save some for your father. We're almost out. I stopped eating junk because you told me to eat breakfast, and now you're telling me there isn't enough? What do you want? What I want you to do is knock it off right now. I'm not in the mood for any more stuff today. Too much confusion at one time. If the portions aren't big enough for you, I suggest you get in your butt in the car and go to the store. Otherwise, eat less and save some for your father. Grace inspects the egg container. Oh, my friend's coming. Bring them. We'll have enough food for an army. They always do. I'm going for more eggs. Want to come? Sure. What? What? Why is everyone so touchy? Is Karen coming? Maybe. Maybe he should stay home. Why? What's going on? Your brothers are fighting. I'm not fighting. He's just being his usual stupid, jerky, uh, asshole self. That's all. I will not have that language in my house, please. What happened? Yesterday, Andy and John fought. Look, I don't want to. John blew up. Yeah. Because. Oh, Andy. Because why? Look, because my doctor friend is a homosexual. 
Ajá. David shrugs and spoons some eggs out of the frying pan and eats out of the spoon. He places the spoon back into the pan. Hey, babe. Well, Andy? Me too, you numbskull. I'm homosexual too. Congratulations. He shakes Andy's hand and spoons more eggs eating them and then eats a couple of sausages. Good. Like I don't know? Sorry, Mom. Let's get some more eggs, Gracie. He goes to leave dragging Grace with them by the arm. Well, John doesn't seem to feel the same. John hi hides a lot of his shit. Sorry, Ma. I, uh, I want to tell everyone at dinner. We said you'd wait. And, and, and Brian's got a career. Well, he and I talked about it. You said you'd wait? Yeah. Brian's coming for dinner. Yeah. Then tell everyone. Screw him. Screw John. You win. We've always backed each other up. John's always acting like a tough ass. You might have a problem with dad though. Thanks. We're brothers. Brothers help each other, right? David shakes Andy's hand and then Andy realizes what David's doing and pulls his hand away. Lights down on the family. Lights up on bedroom. Dad in bed sits straight up. Ah! Ah! Dad crying stands, puts his robe on, and then disappears behind a wall. We hear the toilet flushing and Dad walks quickly out of the bedroom. Lights down on the bedroom. Lights up as Dad enters for the kitchen. In one hand, he carries a small bag which holds his insulin kit, and the other a fly swatter. He stands at the head of the table looking out the window. He wipes tears from his eyes, his back to us. I need juice, Ma. Andy, get some with you, sweetheart. Yeah, sure, Dad. Lots of ice, will you? Yeah, Dad. Say yes, it's nicer, okay? Yes, Dad. Andy fills the glass with ice and juice and gives it to Dad. With Dad's back still to everyone, he drinks then. Why so quiet? What's going on this beautiful Thanksgiving day? Not a cloud in the sky if you goddamn weathermen. It's all bull. When the army says it's going to rain, it rains. When the army says it's going to rain, it rains. I hate them flies, especially those green flies. If there's something dead, the green flies show up. One day on Bougainville in, in, in New Guinea during the big war, our Fiji commandos were on point um, chopping the hell out of the wet jungle bush with their machetes. We were on reconnaissance. We made it to a small clearing surrounded by palm trees. It was hot, man. It was always so hot and full of big ugly bugs, the ugliest bugs you've ever seen. One of the new guys slapped a big yellow thing on his neck, smashed the hell out of it. There was all this green guts all over his neck and his hand. Eddie from the Bronx fell over. He was laughing so hard. We were all busting a gut. Then the Japs opened up. The new guy got it first, cut him in two, shit. Then three more guys bought it. The Nips had us pinned down. Two Nen Shiki Type 11 machine guns. Those little bastards were really dug in. Body pieces and lives were flying all around. Leaves were flying all around us. I kept my guys low. The lieutenant had been killed the day before by a sniper. Three of us crawled until we found a 155 howitzer crater and crawled in. All we could do was stick our carbines in the direction of the 11s. I don't think we even got close to hitting them. We tossed some grenades and missed. How the hell could you miss with a grenade, Tommy? Fucking throw another one, man. Pull the goddamn pin and throw it. I don't like this. We're all going to die. 
Not here, not now, not here, not now. Shoot those little bastards. They're fucking cut us mess up. Kill them! They still kept at us. Most of the platoon had been hit or separated. Then Sonny from Fresno to my right takes one in the head. Oh God, and Tommy from the Bronx on my left, the dumb shit gets his golden glove shoulder blown off. Then a voice out of nowhere says to me, move you dumb jerk move. So I drag Tommy by his good arm and move just as we do a mortar shell slams into our crater. We were dead, dead. I dragged Tommy and never looked back. I never thought I could carry someone that far on my back. I never got hit, not a scratch, but I got typhoid fever a year later. I never saw any of the rest of them. I don't know if who told me to move. <laughs> later that same day, we liberated a Jap uh, brewery. We each carried two cases of Jap beer out of that place. I tried to I try to trick them all, man and boy. I wanted to be drunk. What a day. It is a beautiful day, isn't it, family? Yes, dear. Yes. Yeah, beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. yeah and he wants to bring a friend to dinner tonight. So? Well, we weren't sure it would be all right with you. We always have a ton of food between what you cook and what your mother brings. That's enough to feed the 37th Infantry. Is she making her cranberry jello mold this year, Mom? Yes, yes. Good, and her, fav her fava bean salad? Oh, yeah, uh-huh. And the crab mold, too. Two onion dips. Wait. The beans. She might not have the beans this year. It's uh, too cold for the crop. We'll see, dear, but there will be lots to manja. No damn beans. What's the problem? Johnny doesn't want Andy to bring a friend. He says it's family only. Johnny seems to bring a different lady home every year for the holidays, doesn't he? I mean, we have a full table every year. If he can have once a year, why can't his younger brother? Thanks, Dad. Uh, Dad, I, I, I wanted to... Um... <laughs> then fill up my glass with ice and water. Then you standing over there, will you rinse it out first? Them damn dishwasher leaves those little bits of soap on the rim. Chris goes through the procedure with the water glass. It's not like this guy was Charlie Manson or a fruit. I'm sure if it's Andy's friend, he's a gentleman. Now, if it was your sister's friends, he might be one of those homosexuals. Uh, they, say, they say gay now, right? Father, you are, um... What? It's not funny, Father. It's not funny. It's not. It's a fact. Not all of my friends are gay. And that's not Christian of you, Father. My gay friends are good people. We're Catholics. We're not Christians. And gays don't belong in my house. I'm your father. I deserve respect. Earn it first. And then we can talk about what you deserve. Don't talk to me that way in my house. That's enough, both of you. Calm down now. She can't talk to me that way. Now don't fight like that around Ma, Dad. Ma, are my eggs ready? Yep. Uh, let's all just take it easy. <laughs> Davy, you should be a comedian. Elvis the pelvis. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> What'll I do? Oh, when you are far away and I am blue, oh, what'll I do? Dad gets up, gets his eggs, and begins to sing. Can I stay? Would it be a sin? Because I can't, can't help falling in love with you. Look like a God, this is what was I like the river flows. Surely to the sea, darling, so it goes, some things are meant to be. Shall I stay? Would it be a sin? 
because I can't help falling in love with you because I can't falling in love with you. Go. All right now, all right. Finish breakfast and get ready for mass, everyone. We're going to have to stand in the baby room. Those kids take your shower. If we don't hurry, we're going to be late. Come on, you bunch of bones. Let's get moving. I didn't get breakfast. You've had enough to eat. Mom sits, her right leg begins shaking slightly, and she smiles at one family member and then another. Not a look of insanity, but comforting the family members. All stare at her. You all right, Mama? Uh, I'm not going. Excuse me? Go get ready. Mom's leg stops. She continues smiling and begins ironing, not as hard as with Dad's shirt, as she irons throughout the scene until she and Dad exit. No. Get ready now. Look, this is the last time I'm I, I'm going. You're weird, just like Johnny. Last week I caught him staring into the sky for no reason, not saying nothing. The big dummy. Now you. This is the last time. Just what the hell is that supposed to mean? You live in this house, mister. You'll go to mass with me. I don't care how old you are. We still believe in God, don't we? Man died for his, man died for God and country, God damn it. So you better believe. Anyone who lives in my house abides by my rules. Is that all right with everyone? John does whatever you, God, you don't know anything. John's a little slow, but he's a good boy. He's taken care of the business for the last 10 years and fed this family. I don't want any of you to ever forget that. Neither one of you have let us forget that. I don't always agree. Oh, here we go. With how he gets things done, but he does get them done. All of you should all be thankful that he's around. Dad. There's something that Gracie and I've been wanting to talk Not to you about. Not David. Look, I give you money every you single week. idea what it takes to run a house. He makes money. Dad. If, if I, if. Look, if I spent 10 years down there, I'd get away with his bullshit. And what I'm bull? sick. What bull? Gracie and I want to. And now, son, what bull? No, 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 never mind. But. No, not now. What the hell are you talking about? He works with men all day. He's not a slacker like you, Gracie. Wait, just a- Grace moves toward dad, loaded for bear. David steps between. Dad raises his hand for a second at Gracie and drops it, not because of David between them, as David has pushed her back. Mom continues ironing harder now. Oh, he's not painting his nails behind a makeup counter talking fashions. You're so- Damn blind. Shithead. David and Andy hold her back. And he's a man and I'm not? What the hell's going on here, Ma? Why are these three kids on my, why are these kids on my back today of all days? Let's get ready for mass before I do something and I'll be sorry for it. <laughs> Andy moves to dad. David steps between holding the two of them back. Andy snaps back, walks away, pacing. All right, that's it. We are going to mass now, and we're late. Let's go. Please, kids. I'm taking my shower first. Hey, hey Davey, put, on, put some music on, will you? Soothe the savage beasts. Yep, Dad, anything you say. That's what I like to hear. Ma, I need help with my shot. Bring some juice, will you? Bring some juice. I mean, Father, look, you. Today is Thanksgiving. That's it. Andy, you watch your father have a stroke, yes? You say one more word and you're out for good. You get it? I'm not a part of this family anymore. Join the club, Andy. Join the club. End of act two, scene one. Act two, scene two. Later the same day after mass. Lights up on the dinner table and kitchen. Mother is back in the kitchen working away. Dad is in his easy chair snoozing the football game on. This goes on for a while. Mom is vacuuming the kitchen as the scene progresses into the rest of the house. 
Mom vacuums the house as if she's having sex, hard at first and then smooth and then softly. Mom has to yell over the vacuum. She leaves the vacuum on when Andy's when calling Andy and turns it off while waiting for his reply. She vacuums throughout, on and off, on and off, using the vacuum as a safe harbor, barrier, or weapon when she doesn't want to hear anyone. Andy? Andy? Andy, honey, can you empty the garbage? Andy. Andy, can you empty the garbage, please? Andy, can't you hear your mother? Are you deaf? Oh, that's all right, John. He's busy, I guess. Could you do it? The hell? Andy, you get in here right now and empty the garbage for your mother. Uh, be there in a minute. The boy lives in my house, and he can't do a simple job. If I talk to my mother the way he... I would have had to empty the darn stuff on my hands and knees. After we lost Albert in the damn war, I emptied all the garbage, kept him on the straight and narrow. God damn, he was a good kid. God damn, war, it's time to pull rank. Hey now, father. No, nothing. He lives here, he should pull his weight. He's old enough to be on his own, but no. I let him live here because I'm, because I'm his father. I'm too lenient, I always was. I was that way because he was, but. That's no excuse, no excuse. Please, go get them. Oh. Hi, Grandma. <laughs> uh, you guys ready? How's my dad? Yes, okay, yes, I'll come get you right now. Uh-huh, okay. Oh, oh, did you make uh, the beans? Great. Don't tell David. Uh, we won't get a bite. No, 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 I don't want to. Hello, yeah, I'm okay. Oh, yeah, 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 the shop's okay. Yeah, yeah, yes, I'll see you. His dad slams the phone down. Andy enters from his room, heading towards the door to leave. I'll be back in an hour. The hell? Empty the garbage. All right, all right. No, hey, what the hell is the matter with you? We're not asking for the moon, you know. I don't ask for nothing from you, and your mother doesn't ask for help much either. Look, I'll empty the garbage, all right? Just get off my back. Stop it, you two, please. Don't you raise your goddamn voice to me, you little shit. I'll slap you down. I'll slap you down like I slugged down those japs. You hear me? I said, do you hear me, son? He raises his open hand. Mom vacuums harder. I've heard you twice today, Dad. I hear you. You are the... Well, Ma, you gonna make the yams? Yes, John. You make that uh, shrimp salad too. My mom's crab salad. She has special ways she'd make her, she, she'd make beef ton like nobody's business. Too bad you never got her recipes, Ma. I can still taste the- uh... I made the shrimp salad, is that good enough? What did I say? Yeah, Ma, that's good enough. Hmm. Kiss me, baby, I love you. They're waiting. I'm moving out. What, why? <laughs> why? Yes, why, that's what I said, why are you moving out? Uh, to have my own roof, I I'm 27, I, I want freedom. You said nothing to me before. Oh, we thought it wasn't that big of a deal. Who, who's we? He told me, John. I like the way people share things with the old man. What, what is the big deal? Look, I want his time to myself. Privacy, I want to come and go when I want to not have you breathing down my neck. Dad moves silently to Andy and bends down and breathes down his neck a little and shares, stares with his arms folded over his chest with a big smile. What? What? Look, what is the problem? My own place then, when my friends come over. You have your friends over. What's the big deal? They're always welcome. What the hell's the matter with me? Have your friends. <laughs> I'm getting too old for this damn world. <laughs> you old dog, you sure you want to? Sure, sure, sure you want to have your friends over? Yeah. Come on. I was young once too. It was great to have your own place and have a girlfriend over after a movie, huh? Your mom and I necked after the movies, you know. John, stop that. Sometime during the movie. You're going to live alone? I've got a roommate. 
Andy, this isn't a girl roommate, is it? Mom stops vacuuming. No. Good. I'd like to meet him. You will tonight. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Well, Mommy, it looks like it's going to be just the two of us for a change. We'll have to get used to being alone again. <laughs> yeah, we'll be alone. Dad, I, uh... Mom goes back to vacuuming. Dad and Andy have to speak up to be heard. Yes, son. Never mind. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna get him. You want to come, Andy? <laughs> no, I'm going out for a while. Oh, don't say anything to your grandparents today. You know how they are with change. Yeah. Say yes, for Christ's sake. Just say yes. And Andy, will you empty the garbage for your mother? Now, okay? Sure, Dad. Anything you say. Dad exits out the front door. Andy goes out the back door with the garbage. Could you pick up a few things while you're out, honey? Please, darling, did you hear me? What, Ma? I need some ice. Andy, Andy, I said I need some ice. Yes, uh, Ma, Ma, I was just dumping out the garbage. I'm sorry, dear. You know your father means well. Really? He passes, <sighs> sorry. If I was around him for nine hours a day, I'd be as pig-headed as Johnny. Johnny does care. He gets involved. He's more like Senior than your father. The way he alienates people. Well, Dad does a pretty good job of that, too. At least, you know, Grandpa listens. They don't. Johnny's tempers. Now, let's get him into trouble someday. Well, John acts like he's better off without us. He hides for hours and comes out to eat. He ignores Karen when they're here. All he cares about is getting her to bed. Mom vacuums. Stop that. Don't you talk like that when I'm in my house. Ma, I am just telling- He's afraid. Of what? Like, I gotta go. You okay, Mom? I see ya. I love you, Mom. Me too. Don't forget the ice. Let's see. I think I'll make a little more stuffing for the GD birds. We'll have the rest as leftovers. Darn, we need more olives. Poor olives, olives. Andy, Andy, Andy. Her crying trails off as she vacuums harder and harder. End of act two, scene two. Act two, scene three. Half an hour later, John enters the front door with a couple of grocery bags under his arms. He's just very casually. He puts down the bags and goes right to the refrigerator. Mom's at the table with a cup of coffee. How you doing, mother? All right, darling. Okay. There's some egg salad for you on top of the shelf. Dad made it for you last night. Any good crackers? I hid them for you in the back porch. How's Karen? Fine. You coming? Oh. I... You know, we like her a lot. She's a good girl. All of us consider her part of the family. By the way, uh, you two ever talk about her? Uh, Mother. You know? Well, she's wonderful, and we'd like to see you with one for a change. And you and she would make a great... <laughs> what, what, Mother? Uh, married? Yeah. What's wrong with that? Your father and I have been married for 37 years now, and we've raised four good children. What's wrong with that? Nothing, but I don't want that now. It, it, it didn't work before. I, I like living alone. I know you do, dear. I'm not trying to push you. I, I just want you settled. You're settled? No, no, you're not. Look, we love you, but 
but you don't seem oh, forget it don't eat too much today okay we're having a feast but you uh andy here out with a friend <laughs> don't start oh come on don't <laughs> try to see he's having a hard time of it and family attacking him doesn't help i'm not he's fine you asked him to see your doctor look i uh i don't know if that's gonna are you uh grab a brush and help me in a minute help me towards Andy. david enters through the front door he goes right up to john before he's out and grabs him from behind picking him up in the air and pushes him up against the wall then he lets him back down and backs oh, backs away open-handed boxing both have done this game many times before how you doing, your hamburger? John and David slap fight. I'm gonna bitch slap you, huh? Sorry, Ma. Ma, this is the last time you'll see your son alive. Float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. The two open-handed box each other around the room. Come on, you two, that's enough. Someone's gonna get hurt. Did John eat all the egg salad? I saved a teaspoon for you, you hog. Oh yeah? You dead, Joe, dead. It. Here you go, Joe. Here you go. David open-handed punches John's gut and getting one through. Faking it, John doubles over as if he's got the wind knocked out of him. David moves in for the kill, and John straightens and strikes with a combination of his own, and David goes down for the count. Nine, ten, you're out. Gracias, lady. Uh, Holy so what's your brilliant idea? Gracie. All right. Oh, yeah. The shop. Well... It involves grace too. Well, since before the war, the, the Japs had bought most of this raw steel from the US. So? Maybe I should talk to dad first. You gotta get through me first. All right. Well, see, they buy 90% of their West Coast steel from Brosen Metals. So? We change scrap steel and make a killing. We'd have to buy in large volume. We don't have the capital or the land. Right. We can get a lot of the capital from our new partners. New partners? The Japs. Japanese. What? Yes. The Japanese build the refineries and auto plants here in the US. We're full partners. They buy their metal directly from us refine the steel and build the whole plant, which we own at the foot of the Dumberton Bridge. We've become the exclusive seller of raw metals, forget parts on the West Coast. We've created lots of US jobs. We're having no trouble getting loans cause we'll have the lion's share of the market cornered. The Japs are saving fortune on labor, taxes and shipping, We've all won. Where's this property? 200 acres, dockside. We stole it. What? And we got 100 World War II mothball ships. Gracie and I scapped, scraped 20 grand together and have a one month hold on it all. You and Gracie thought of this. Pretty good, huh? I think it's wonderful. Uh, it's, uh, it's... It's what? What? And why do they only give you one month? Somebody else wants in. We got first crack. How much more? 200,000 <laughs> for, for both, but they'll be easy. The bank's ready on money to make the loan for the balance. They think it's a great idea. We just need to work out the details. <laughs> and, and where do you get the other 180,000? <laughs> it's the only way. We need the extra collateral. We'll lose the whole deal and the 20 grand. We've, uh, Gracie got the memo deal with the Honda. Japanese cars of the future, John. Honda's biting at the bit. They're ready. 
The bank's a shoe in. We can't lose. David, John, I, I don't see where. Oh, the mom, tell mom where the rest of the money comes from. You've got to take chances or you go nowhere. You're taking a chance on our lives with your crazy idea. David, <laughs> where's the money going to come from? We'll have to put up the homes, the property the shop's on. The shop is collateral. Grandpa's ready to sign. I swear this deal can't miss. I, I told you, he wants to gamble it all away. Our home? <laughs> Donner? Everything I built up around here, it's, it's... Did Andy set up the game? David exits. <laughs> yeah, you talk to dad, huh? You do that. Grace enters, yawning. Your brothers are a couple of nuts, you know? Nuts. Did dad go get grandma and grandpa? Yes. Did you put down $20,000 on some boats and promise my life is collateral? What? Uh, the, um, no, well, um, okay, we, we just, we gotta go talk to dad. I, I, I thought, uh, David! I think you should talk to the whole family before you try crazy ideas. Just don't worry about it, Ma, okay? Uh, where's David? David! Get away from me. Get away from me. What's wrong? You want my homes for collateral? David! <laughs> oh, Mother, please, will you stop crying? For God's sake, it's foolproof. It sounds reckless. This is everything we fought for. You fight off the Indians for your stuff? You're damn right. My stuff. And don't you forget you to take a chance. <laughs> Dad says chances are for suckers. Wait till he hears you want the Japanese for partners. Ma, that's why we're broke today. Please don't cry, Ma, don't do that. I'll stab you with my knife if you ruin my day. Grandma and Grandpa enter with boxes of goodies in their hands. Mom puts down the knife a couple of seconds behind is dad with the stuff. Oh, how is everybody? Oh, oh. hi, Ma. How are you feeling? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I made it through another year. By next Thanksgiving, I'll be dead. <laughs> Stop that. Well, I'm praying I make Christmas, but if I do, I'll be dead by next Thanksgiving. Well, you'll be better off with that. Mother, stop that. What's wrong? Grandma points in the direction of Grandpa entering. <laughs> Grandpa laughing, wearing a flowered toilet seat cover on his head. He dances into the kitchen, twirling Mom around as if on a dance floor. He hugs her. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. Hi, Papa. How are you doing? Oh, yeah, he calls me the old fart. I took your mom to the smorgasbord last night. I stole you some chicken. He removes from his coat pocket a napkin, opens it up, and reveals three chicken drumsticks. <laughs> hey, 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 where the hell's everybody? Grandma. Mom takes the chicken and puts it in the refrigerator. Hi, Grandma. <laughs> Are you whispering something to me? What? Who are you anyway? I'm getting so old I can't remember faces. Next year I'll be dead, so you won't have to worry about visiting us anymore. Stop wow. it. Uh, who, 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 is, who is that, Grandma? Gracie? But there's your sister Isabel. Uh, I'd like to nail her to a cross. <laughs> She's got some legs and a nice touch, too. Like to get my teeth into that. But just last month, she brought over some apple pie, and she says to me, like to taste my apples, John. <laughs> Thought your grandmother was going to have a stroke right then and there. Haven't talked since. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm a little thirsty here. How about a highball? Great game. 
<laughs> Grandma gives Grandpa a punch in the arm. Oh, man, she packs a wallop. Don't you forget it, old fart. Stop that, you two. I'm sorry I haven't called lately, but things have been a little crazy at work. David and... Gracie, uh, fix Grandpa a highball. Who's your limit? Grandpa doesn't answer, just turns away as if he never heard. Gracie fixes a highball and hands it to him. Jack here for dinner? Um, well, we kind of broke up a few weeks back, and, you know, it's been a little weird now, but... But David and I are... Again, again, I wish you'd make up your mind about this. him. Still sleeping with his grace? Gracie ah. walks through. <laughs> gets, uh, grace gets a towel and moves to clean the mess off his pants, but he grabs the towel out of her hand. Sorry, Grandpa. I'm so sorry. No, Here, let me get I'll that. I'll get you another. No, no, no. I'll get it. Grace moves away. Too bad about Jack, honey. I liked him. He's not dead, Grandma. We might see. Oh, that's the trouble with society today. What the heck are you talking about, John? People stick to their guns. They don't listen like the old days either. What a dad. Grandpa makes a new highball. I I know. I know I'm just an old fart, but am am I right, sweetheart? I'm right, damn it. Grace, and that's final. Gracie splits and that's final. No change in your mind. That's that. We'd have a better world if people just stick to their game. Patton wanted to drive the commies out of Berlin. If they let him, we'd never had a Cold War. Hell, those no good commie bastards would be eating Kentucky Fried Chicken in the Kremlin. I bet a million dollars they'd be opening one of those, what do they call them, McDougal's. McDonald's. A hamburger place is smack in the middle of Red Square tomorrow. You make up your mind. That's that. I'm not saying anymore. That's that. Long damn people running this country always have, always will. Maybe we'll see Jack for Christmas. Grandpa shakes his head and downs his highball in one gulp. He makes another. Moving back to Israel, I don't know. I hear the fish are biting in the Truckee River. We should take a trip up this weekend, John. Sunday on the American Sportsman. You know, people at Donna ate each other to survive. Not the Donna party story on Thanksgiving. (sighs) John and David enter. Hi. Hi, y'all. John hugs his grandparents, no kisses from him, but grandma kisses him on the cheek. Where's he going? Hey, yous look good. Lost some weight? Grandma pats his ass. Mom grabs John by the arm and moves him away. A couple of pounds, softball, but but after you're cooking tonight. No, it's only a couple of times a year. It's good for you. She slaps his ass. John shrugs and moves John further away. Karen coming? Well, she's such a nice girl. I really like her, you know. How are you two doing? Grandma, I showed her a few things. Oh, Grandma oh, twists you. Grandma's ear. <clears throat> yeah. She's a nice girl, like me. I bet she makes good sauce, right, Father? Grandma's right. still holding his ear. Right, right. But yours is a lot better. She lets go. Whew. John, I was just telling your dad. Well, no, he was. He was just telling your dad. And we should go up to the Donna Lake this weekend. Big trout. How to work. Dad, honey and I are going to go to Reno for a couple of days to relax. Yeah, well, we'll all go. Grandma and honey can go shopping, and you and I can fish. We can try our luck at night. And hear old man, you hear old man? Yeah, just, oh, just honey and me. Nonsense, we'll all go. Sure, Dad, whatever you say. Good. Grandma gives Grandpa another shot in the arm. Oh. Nice right cross, Grandma. 
Leave that them alone. alone. You leave them alone. Woman, you, you are the worst. And why did you marry me? Looks like a butterfly, stings like a bee. Karen helps with the dishes after dinner, huh, Mom? Yeah, she scores points there. David hangs up the phone and dials again. None of your other girlfriends or ex-wife lifted a finger, did they, John? I'll help tonight. Oh, I'm going to faint. I'll help. That's what he said, Grace. I haven't heard him offer the dishes since he was a kid. I feel charitable today, Dad. Did Gus come by for the cherry front end? No, I, I thought he changed his mind. <laughs> How's old Gus? Damn, he must be 80 by now. Uh, uh, did I ever tell you guys the time he and I picked up these three hookers? He loved her. God, we must have had the crabs for two weeks. Yes, <laughs> yeah, no, no. He, he called again, wanted me to hold it for him. He's going to pay $650. I sold it. What do you mean you sold it? I was holding it for Gus. He, he said he'd call by three, and he didn't. So I figured he changed his mind. So I, I sold it to Benson's for $950. You figured. When I tell you something, that's that. You understand? I said to hold it for Gus. I promised him. You got no right. We're partners, Father. I, I got an extra 300 that we need right now. That is not the point. I gave him my word and my word is it. What the hell am I supposed to do now? I told you what to do, you dumb jerk. You don't listen, you stupid. Dad raises his backhand at John's face and mom comes between. Here's the onion dip. Boy, doesn't this look good. Come on, everyone. Let's feast on grandma's onion dip. She makes the best. Gracie? Get the other dips and grab the good chips and napkins. John, honey, could you make a fire? Grandpa grabs John's arm and pulls him toward the fireplace. Make a little fire would feel really good tonight. Help me, Johnny. John stacks wood into the fireplace. Your father's a fool. You know the business better than the two of us combined. He doesn't think so. He's wrong. John, you can have one beer today. It's Thanksgiving. <laughs> no, thanks, Ma. Get me some ice and water, will you? I, uh, lots of ice. Dad moves to the onion dip and eats copiously. David slams the phone down and enters from the phone conversation in a huff. Hello. David moves to the table, sits and eats, not greeting anyone. Grandma sits alone. Onion, crab dip. Bring me a soda, Gracie. Yellow bastards. Grace has been watching him. She gets a soda, pours it into a glass, drinks it, and smiles at David. Dumb jerk. Save some for me. What's the matter? I will if you say, what, what's? Later. Andy enters alone. Hi, everyone. Andy kisses everyone except John. Uh, doesn't your older brother get a holiday kiss too? After a beat, he goes over to John and tries to smack him one. John pulls away. Uh, don't eat all that, will ya? You bunch of hogs, save some for me. I need my strength. What's that? I'm working out, getting stronger. Yeah, you look great. Yeah, I feel as good as I look. Well? Uh, uh, I'd kill him. You wouldn't have a chance. Kick his ass, Johnny. He challenged you, Johnny. They could get hurt. All right. Dad gets out of the seat to watch. They all stand around and cheer for either or. Not a fight, a family competition. Something they do. The two sit at the corner of the kitchen table, ready each other's hands, and... One, two, three, go! Come on, Andy, go! Oh, oh, go. go. A couple of nuts is what they are. Come on, Johnny! Get him, boy! Kick his ass! Go on. Do it. Do it. Andy and John struggle for a long time. John begins to put Andy down. The family ad libs cheers throughout. Just <laughs> when John looks like the victor, Andy recovers and is definitely going to win. Just when Andy is John pinned, John lets go of Andy's hand and walks away. Mom stops moving her leg. Damn faggot. I got the cramp. No fair. We'll finish later. Well, I did it. I did it. I'd be big, strong brother. <laughs> you didn't beat me. I quit. 
Mom goes back to cooking. Grandpa makes another highball. Quit. Lost. Same thing. Never. Let's go. You kicked his ass, Andy. Later. Why don't you have another drink, you? What? Complain again? I earned this drink. Earned? All right, all right. Let's 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 have our traditional Thanksgiving hug. Come on, you guys. Let's do the hug. That was yours and Andrew's tradition, not mine. If he was... You are so mean today. Just do it for us. Grandpa turns his back to everyone. Grandma moves to the middle of the room, arms extended and wiping a few tears away. Grace grabs dad, David, and Grace and pulls them to the middle of the room. Mom waves Andy over and he moves slowly to the middle of the room. John stays still and won't move. Mom, dad, Andy, David, and Grace and grandma hug. John and grandpa stare at each other as the others hug. David grabs dad's arm and walks him down, left of the dining room. David whispers to dad and he listens intently. They sit next to each other as David whispers to him. John and grandpa sit but move their chairs away from each other, from the seats next to them. They want more space. Grandpa has a drink in hand. Come on, come on you guys, let's, let's go. Andy, shouldn't we wait for your friend? Mom, you say the prayer please. Dear God, thank you for this wonderful meal. Thanking you for keeping most of us together in good, well, pretty good health. Keep us together for many, one more year. And thanks to the cooks. Amen. 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 Eat slow and eat lots. This looks great if I do say so myself. Uh, it's terrible good, Grandma. The fava beans are the best. Uh, more garlic? Yeah, more better with more garlic. <laughs> no vampires here tonight. <laughs> Pass the red stuff, Gracie. You mean cranberry sauce, Father? What I said. Just say cranberry sauce. Pass the darn stuff. Mom, Andy's a pig. Oh, I'm going. <laughs> Gracie, please pass the butter. Dad, man, you hear what your jerky man did? The uh, uh, the the the, the malice. <laughs> what do you expect him to do? If you don't kill the fruit flies here, they'll wipe out the state's crop. Mayor says you can breathe it, but it ruins your cause pain. What's that? It, it does. Race pickup was ruined. You're both full of it. You believe what anyone tells you. Did I raise you like this? Yeah, you raised me. What happened to, to me? Nothing. What that's supposed to mean. I thought so. This, pardon my French, Malayeth on shit is no good. Senior, we should fire all their behinds all the way to the White House. They say it won't hurt us and I believe them. I believe them, okay? I mean, if you guys had your way, you'd let all the fruit die. Let's fire everyone according to you guys. Who we should fire is that lard ass lard councilwoman. She's the one. Come on. That's what they call her, Ma. She's always dragging her heels when it comes to this city. She's a real beauty, I'll tell you. They should hang her in Hecker Park. And while we're eating dinner? Well, Ma, she doesn't do a damn thing. Pardon my French, except get her family the gravy, city jobs. Yeah, I read it in yesterday. I read it yesterday in the Mercury. They do the job, who cares? Yes, but Grandma, that's not the point. It's a conflict of interest? You hit that one on the head. But what's the harm? They get the easy jobs. That's the thing? thing yes thing if they do the job then what's the big deal the big deal is that it's wrong to hire family they should hire people that deserve the job family doesn't deserve the job just because they're family well at least the councilwoman's a stylish dresser like gracie's friends in the city 
Did their stylish dressers, does that make them normal? What? Your friends, your homo friends in the city, they're stylish. Are you just... Like, like the lardass. Those guys have to shove it right in our face. Why can't they just do their thing in private like decent people? We never did those things in people. You, Dad? Do I look like a pervert? Those beauties next to your mom's house, they drink day and night. I leave their babies crying and dirty diapers at the front lawn. It's sickening. Should be stayed in my own. Live and let live. Bullshit. Get rid of them now. <laughs> There's lots more to eat. Mashvika, Manja. Where's your friend? Late. Let's slow down and wait for our company. We'll get cold. I'll get it. Grace gets up and answers the door. Uh, never have a. Hi, Karen. Happy Thanksgiving. You too. You look great. Oh, good. You look. Did you great. look at Sandy's plate. Did you save any for the rest of us? <laughs> no, Grandma. Oh, you <laughs> big. <laughs> Karen enters, dressed very sexy and carrying a white pie box in her purse. Grace follows her in. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, you're such a pretty girl. What a lucky guy to be with such a pretty girl. Yeah, give me a French kiss, you. you Calm down, I, senior. I you think? Fruits, you. you eat? I ate all the salad. You. She hits the back of Grandpa's head. Ooh. He's got the devil today. Oh, that's okay. John, you got to pay more attention to this beautiful young girl. It sure smells good. Good. <laughs> Sit. Ah, my lap. Sit my lap and mange it. Get Karen a chair, Johnny. What the hell's the matter with you? You stop now or I'm leaving. What the hell did I do? Stop drinking now. I just had a couple of highballs. I wasn't doing any harm. She's a knockout. <laughs> hey, Care. I need a date Saturday night. I'm with you, Davey. John throws right. a napkin at David. <laughs> All right. You know, you're an ass when you drink. Karen, just sit down and relax. And, and get Karen a plate, too, Johnny. Try my fava bean salad, eggplant. Right, right. Uh, look, Karen, everyone, uh, I I'm sorry. Sorry. Save a little for me. <laughs> uh, John, let me uh, help you. Everything's good, right, Grandma? You bet, sweetheart. Give him some fava beans. You want some eggplant, dear? Not really. Save some for me, will you? John, you've already had thirds. Don't tell me how much to eat already, not today. When John got typhoid fever in the Philippines in the war, he lost all that weight. As soon as he come home, he get fat. Everything's terribly good. Thanks, senior. Family's worth it. What do you want, Karen? Nothing. It speaks. It's alive. <laughs> Leave your brother alone. You <laughs> dessert. John? Oh, uh, fighting amongst the young lovers. What's next? Mm, I'm trying to lighten things up. Let's not take things too seriously. Oh, come on, everybody. It's Thanksgiving. The man seeing other girls and Karen wants to get married. He's nuts. Oh, he's just like his Uncle Pete. Never satisfied with one woman. God bless him. Full of the devil. John loves women. Mary. Uncle Pete was a pimp. Look, now let's not get started, all right? There's too much stuff happening here lately. I don't want any more problems. Oh, what stuff? 
Never mind. Well, what's she? What's she talking about, David? Nothing, Dad. Look, Ma. What's I, wrong with this one today, Ma? Has Has everyone gone clear? Dad. David chokes on a drink. What? Is there a surprise today? I love surprises. In '42, our game mechanic was doing the waitress at the diner next door. Her husband, pow! <laughs> she was a look. <laughs> Someone die? Well, well. No. What? Nothing, Dad. That's all. Let's just clear the table, everyone. Let's just clear the table. Can, can we stop with all this sex talk? Are you on drugs? Oh, stop that. Now, no one here takes drugs. Now, come on. If everyone pitches in, we can get to the dessert quicker. I made pumpkin and apple and let's go. I thought you were going to make a cherry. I'm not finished. Yeah, I want more. Then eat. Eat. My brothers are the biggest weenies in the world. I agree. <laughs> did I uh, teach you to speak that way, Grace? Grandpa did. What? Don, eat something. Man, oh, man. If you two ever make up when we expect grandchildren, Senior? Well, they should get married and have kids. Johnny's going to be too old to play ball with his son. He is old. Funny man. Yeah, Johnny should get married so the women, or the rest of the women of the planet would be safe. Come on, Johnny, tie the knot. Karen's such a catch, and you love her, don't you? Aren't you tired of watching all those women's asses uh, sway down the street? Andy, this is good. Aren't you tired of doing every cute bitch that looks at you? Andy. Time to settle down instead of banging sluts since your divorce, huh? Andy. Yeah, tonight we'll do two Catholic whores. Then we'll go to a gay club and fuck two guys. God damn you, Andy. John Sr. jumps out of his chair to grab Andy, but John Jr. is faster. He grabs Andy, throws him to the ground. Johnny hovers over Andy, ready with both fists. John Sr., Grandpa, and David hold Johnny back. I, you asshole. Everyone by this time is on their feet, out of their chairs in the commotion, yelling for all to stop. Andy is still on the ground. Look, look, you see? Me? Boys. Andy stands and moves forward. David, dad, grandpa between him and John as the three hold Andy and John back. Boys, my ass, dad. Andy. No. I'm leaving. Hey. I, 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 I'm saying for this. I don't think, just, oh, you fucking asshole. Don't you ever talk to me like that to me again. Shut up. Understand? I'm sick of you and your disgusting mouth and your goddamn drinking at all hours. The way you treat women is pathetic. I hate you. I hate the sight of you. If Andrew was still alive, he'd kick you as a silly ass. Why did I marry you? Grace is rolling over in her grave. You're pathetic. Now sit down and shut up. You, me shut up. You shut up. Put up with your holier than thou attitude for the last six months. What did I ever do to you? You married me, you dickhead. Grandma, please. Please what? He's no good. All he ever does is drink. Why the hell did you ever get him to retire? He should have stayed at the shop and driven you nuts till he crashed his car into a guardrail and killed himself. You, you keep away from me. I'll keep away from you, you waste. Have another highball. Jesus. Mother. <laughs> Me? Boys. Yeah, you. What the hell is going on here? Listen to me, goddammit. I, I, I owe you nothing. 
John runs the yard because he's afraid of dad. I'm sorry for you, Karen. My brother doesn't know what he is. I disagree. Andy, stop this. No, 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 you sit down. Watch it, Andy. Already spent dad's insurance money? You piece of shit! I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna fucking kill you! John grabs mom's new sharp knife from the table and moves toward Andy. My God, no! Andy pushes dad and David aside effortlessly, fends off the knife, knocking it out of John's hand, and knocks John down with a hard punch. John hits the floor, the wind knocked out of him. John, beaten and surprised, stays down, trying to regain breath. Mom puts the knife on the dining room table. You asshole. What's wrong? Good for you, Andy. My him. You goddamn homo. I hate you. That's right. He's gay. You bastard son of a bitch. You did this to me. Johnny, no. No. Karen grabs her purse. She has a second thought, but she takes out a gay men's magazine and throws it on the dining room table. What the fuck is this? When were you going to tell me about this, huh? John stands and looks at the table. He sees the magazine. I wish I was dead. I wish. You wish I was dead, right, Ma? John throws up behind the table. I think I'll take you up on that date, Davy. You bitch! Karen slaps John. I loved you, and I would have helped you. Helped what? You weren't there. None of you were there. I saved your ass, and they took mine. They took mine. They made me, made me. Remember, Ma? You knew. I told you, and you told me. Told me your problems, yours. This was the worst day of your life. I said I wanted to die. I wanted to kill myself. And you said I should do it. I should do it. So you would be all right. And when I didn't, you never stopped dad from hitting me, from calling me names. Johnny was the weird one, not Andy. It was me, right? You knew, you fucking knew you didn't help me. Come on. Enough, that's enough. Dad pushes Karen out of the way. Don't you touch her. John moves at dad, grabbing him and throwing him back hard. Dad falls back, but not down. Still a tough GI. She hits John hard in the gut, knocking him down. David goes down. David goes to John, trying to help, and John feebly pushes him away. You bastard. I don't want another word out of your goddamn mouth. You want that weak, pathetic... Leave your poor mother alone. Andy? Yes. Both of them are fags. This can't. Wow. What's happening? Wow. We're, we're... Jesus. Look, I didn't ask for this. John, and uh... Is it our fault that you're this way? Fault? It's no one's fault if you think I wanted this, but this is me. Mom goes up to Andy and kisses him and hugs him, as does Grace and Grandma. The men stay where they are. John alone on the floor, Karen away from him. This is the last time. My life, you're a piece of shit! I didn't... As, Dan advances, as Dad advances at John, John takes a wine bottle from the table and hits that on the head and stands over him. You want to go again? Come on. I was first in line for your royal screw. I've put up with both of you all of my life, running your business because you were too lazy to move your ass. I killed myself so you all could live pretty good while I scrounged for crumbs. I hate all of you. Everything is messed up. My insides are wrong. And all of you did it to me. I defended you, Ma. I saved you from him and you turned your back on me. I was 10. Ted, and for the last 27 fucking years, I think about it every day. <laughs> enough, enough. All you care about is food <laughs> and him. You've called me stupid, 
since I was little, and I believed it, but I'm not. My heart. I've carried you on my back forever. I kept mom from calling the cops on your ass. I can't remember. Oh, Johnny. I'm not going to let you do it to me anymore. But Grandpa, do you understand? I'm history. Drown for all I care. What? What? What did I, what did I do? They, they, I should have let them pound you. They should have fucked you. What did I do? And he moves towards John, attempting to embrace him. And as he just about reaches him, John punches the air until exhaustion and falls to his knees, sobbing. Karen moves to him, wrapping her arms around him, and he tires in vain to punch her away, but he's spent. It's me. Me, God, it's me. Johnny. Johnny, what did I do? Me. Me. He smashed Dad's dreams. The band. What? This isn't about you, Dad. What I did to your dreams? That's enough, Senior. We all know what you, what you. Kate, Katie, I'm so sorry. Uh, please sit down. We, we went on the road. Dad. You did. I helped you. Who said? Sit down, Ma. Junior did go on the road. I loaned him the money. He had two small hits, played lots of clubs. I covered for him at work for years. Sorry, honey. I lied to him too. I'm gonna. Oh, but the break stopped coming and the club started closing. Music was changing and Junior wasn't about to change. So he got discouraged and quit. What? That's right, he quit. Then he asked me, no, no, begged me to come into the shop. I told him no. I told him to go back on the road and work harder. He did for a while, but too bad he came back. I told him I'd never make him a full partner because if he gave up on something he loved, he'd give up on me. And he did, on both. You were at Donner Lake repairing the cabin. Too bad. The band made it. If Junior would have stuck it out, he would have been famous too. He had what most of the talent that had all the luck. They had all the luck and that's what it takes. Luck. We never were a very lucky family. His band played with Sinatra for a few years. I think some of them are still there. Right, John? I don't believe it. This is a joke, right? No, it's not. But I didn't quit. I gave up. You know, Dad, I never could have made it. What the hell you say? I guess we're in the same boat, huh? Not quite. I guess we're alike, huh, John? We're nothing alike. John stands and pushes Karen and moves toward Andy with fists ready and with the force of a bull. Dad steps in between them and slaps John hard in the face. John grabs Dad and holds onto his collar and won't let go. Dad tries to free himself, but he can't. John, with superhuman strength, moves Dad with ease around the room. Just enough! Just stop! Stop! I can't take any more! Any, anyone want pie? Let me go. Get out of my house, you goddamn motherfucking faggot! Repelled by Dad's words, John Jr. releases Dad and peels off, sitting. Karen tries to comfort him. You're fired! What? I never gave you the stock to cause you, cause you're a fool. Capiche? I told you years ago to stay away. All these years, John. You lied to me all these years. It's over. You're damned right it's over. 
Let it go, Ma. I gave up on myself because you gave up on me. I wasn't that good. I kept telling myself that I was, but I wasn't. I needed you, Dad. I needed you to make me see I really wasn't that good. But, but those two songs. I stole those songs from a friend, one of the other guys in the band. You told me to. That's a lie. No, it's not. You were so fucking stubborn when I was laying in that hospital bed for six months. I wrote you. I sent letters to mom. I never got Bullshit, Dad. You were great. I was okay. I made myself believe I was great to get you off my back. All I wanted was to work at the shop. I wanted security after the war. You have no idea. It was terrible. All my friends died, Dad. Not me. Why didn't they get me? Was I saved for you? For all this shit? I know I was good at one thing. The shop. I begged you to let me in. I begged you to help, but you wouldn't. I hated the band. It was your dream. Now you give me my due or I'll declare you incompetent and take it. I started that place. You're not gonna. Son. Your story is so fucking touching, daddy. You're a beauty. All's forgotten of the faggot. He drops his pants. How about some faggot ass, Daddy? Happy Thanksgiving. I fucking hate you. Dad, Dad moves at John. Mom's fast there, grabbing her new large carving knife from the dining room table and stabs John Jr. in the stomach <laughs> twice. This Lord, is you. how you handle him. Uh, 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 call 911. Yes. <gasps> yes. There's been a, an accident. I'm ninth. My brother. He's dying. Mama, no! Oh, no, Johnny! Oh, my friends. Oh, no, no, no. That's the way. You should have done it when you were 10, Johnny. Would have saved you a lot of heartache. Yeah, 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 yes, yes. I told you your temper would get you into trouble one day. Back it. Yes, yes, yes. Mom is seated in a chair by Grandpa and Dad. She rocks back and forth. I told you. I told you. Let, let, let's have some pie. Apple crumb. Apple crumb. <laughs> no, no. Lemon meringue. Cherry? No. No apple crumb. Heat it at 250 for three minutes with a slice of cheddar on top. So My brother. Leftovers tomorrow. Lots to... That's the manja, manja. Johnny, get ready for school. Johnny, wake up. Johnny. He's Johnny. <laughs> my brother, come, my brother. <laughs> my brother, he's dead. <laughs> what will I do if you are far away? As the lights fade to black, she hums into the blackness. My brother. The end. Since we don't have a live audience, we'll just clap for each other. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Um, we have another premiere. Everyone recover now. Um, we have another uh, performance, rather, on Sunday at the same time from, at 7.30. Um, so tell your friends, and we hope to see some of you again. Thanks, everyone. <coughs> Uh, 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 u